Okay, today I want to show you how I create my GitHub profile readme. So this is, if you go to my GitHub right now, github.com slash onlyphantom, this is how it looks like now. It has this cool um, sort of a, a promo banner, I guess. And then there's all the links here, connect with me. You know, you can find me on Twitter, on GitHub, LinkedIn, and there are some work affiliations. That's it, very simple ones. I've meant to do this for a while, but I never had time to come around to doing it. It's somewhere on my to-do list. Um, I just never got around to doing it. So today I just decided, hey, I'm gonna just uh, commit myself one hour, just get it done. So how do I get this nice profile readme where I could just write in Markdown and have this nice thing uh, rendered on the sort of my homepage of my, uh, my GitHub profile. So I'm at the GitHub documentations and this is where I find more information about how do you create your own profile readme. It says about your profile readme, you can share information about yourself with the community on github.com by creating a profile readme. GitHub shows your profile readme at the top of your profile page. So this is even before all of your repositories here. So these are all your pin repositories. It is right up here. And it's very common to use this to sort of give a self-introduction about you know what I'm doing, where you can find me, um, and the projects that you involve. Really the only thing you want to worry about right now is this is this prerequisite section here. So it says you created a repository with a name that matches your GitHub username. So if your GitHub username is ABCD, you want to create a pro uh, repository and you want to name it ABCD. So in my case, mine is uh, only phantom so I want to go in there and say create new repository and I want to put only phantom but it says here only phantom is a special repository that you can use to add a readme.md to your github profile make sure it's public and initialize it with a readme to get start right so that's that's what we get you can also choose if you want to have a description here it's optional you can add a description right now or you can choose choose to leave it blank because you can always come back to it and add your own description later so we're going to just leave it blank for now we're just going to scroll down a little bit and see what's next the more important thing is to remember to keep this repository public so anyone on the internet can see this repository if you keep this as private it won't render on your profile because it's meant to be private so you want to choose public and not private and when it comes to a readme file this is the uh, this is required for you to even have anything to render right but there is also a choice here you can either add a readme you can ask github to initialize that with a readme so when you git pull it would automatically bring in a, a readme file in there and you can modify that file or you can just uh, leave it unchecked because you can also create your own readme i'm sure a lot of you know how to do that already you don't even uh, actually need github to do that for you you said oh no just give me a blank repository and i'm gonna add my own readme file and commit to that so here you make your choice i'm gonna leave it unchecked I'm not gonna worry about the license, I'm just gonna proceed to create repository. You will see some instructions, either using the quit setup, using HTTPS or SSH, or you can just create a new repository on the command line following the instructions here. I wanna just quickly show you what my current profile looks like before I commit uh, my profile readme on this. It's just the plain old vanilla GitHub you expect to see my re pin repositories, there's nothing on here. In 10 minutes, once we're done with all of this, we're gonna come back to this page and you're gonna see a new look on my profile readme, on my GitHub profile. You're gonna see that I, on top of my pin repositories, you see my banner, you see some links and stuff like that. Those are all marked down that we're gonna commit in here into this repository. So make sure that the repository is there. Um, it's your username slash your username. So the repository name has to be the same as your username. And then you put in a readme file, whatever is on the readme file is gonna be rendered onto the profile. And for the next section, I'm just gonna speed up the video a little bit to save you some time, but I'm just basically opening up terminal and just following the instructions that I see on here and just doing it on my terminal and we'll come back to see the results when we're done. And now we have ourselves this pretty looking fancy than fancy GitHub readme because this is a readme on a special repository. In, our, in this case, uh, special means a repository with a username as its name. And we can now hop over to our profile page and check out the result. And notice that the old profile page, as we refresh the page, we now change to the new one with a profile readme at the top row. Sure enough, above the rows of our pin repository, we see our readme being rendered. So this concludes our first step in getting the profile readme set up. And if you want to, you can absolutely just go ahead now to unleash your creativity using the markdown format. Modify our readme, commit the code, and push it to the repository. Uh, just to show you what I've done on my readme, I've added a bunch of links here. So A, A is basically the HTML tag for links. So A, href, that's basically linking to that. So if somebody click on that link, where should it land, right? So that's the href, and I have the images, and all of the images are basically from this shields.io. I'm gonna show you what shields.io in, uh, in, in a bit. I think it's a fantastic service. It has a ton of uh, profile, uh, generate these kind of badges for you. So you have the badges, uh, you, you see it in a second what it looks like. But uh, I wanna quickly introduce to you uh, shields.io, and I'm gonna show you how I use that. So once you're in shields.io, 
if you click on let's say the rating tab, the rating itself you see all of these badges these are things that you probably seen on github on some other very popular github repository you see like ratings you see how many downloads so, sort of like a social proof in a way right acts like a social proof to tell you that hey there are a lot of people using this project it should be fine should be safe you should go ahead and give it a try and so that's the rating tab we're not going to look at the rating tab we're going to look at the socials tab here you find the github you find reddit you find youtube some of these popular social media and you can just click on one of them and then enter for example in youtube channel views it asks you for a channel id you can enter channel id you can change the style the label you can do all of that and you generate that uh, url for you copy that and paste that back into your uh, markdown and that's really all you need to do But just to walk you through what I have in my Markdown file, I have my views, my YouTube views, my subscribe on YouTube channel uh, button, I have my follow, Twitter, and I have uh, a GitHub, just the counter followers, LinkedIn, all of this is generated using the same workflow that I showed you using shows.io. So plug that in. If you ask for a LinkedIn URL, you plug the uh, LinkedIn URL in there, you copy that, paste it back into Visual Studio Code. So that's really simple. And then the next section, so I kind of have a separate that into two sections. The first section is just kind of like where you can connect with me, where you can find me on the internet. And then the second section is kind of like a work and affiliations. I put down, you know, where I currently work. So I work at Algorithm Data Science School. Um, that, that's, uh, that's something I put down in here. And I also have my super type uh, data science consultancy that's also in here and some of my past experiences. So just kind of a way to just introduce myself really quickly to people who do not know me, who first, you know, just land on my profile and just kind of want to get an idea of uh, who, they, who they're looking to work with, right? So that's kind of uh, uh, my profile. You obviously can have your own uh, descriptions here. You can maybe have a little bit of a background, your education, all of those things. Um, but keep it short and tidy. That's kind of, I mean, ultimately, it's still not a CV. It's really just a GitHub profile. So just a nice introduction to yourself, and that should do it. And once you're done, make sure you do a Git push. Go back to your repository and then take a look and make sure that everything still looks fine. If you want to, you can now hop over to your profile. So github.com slash your username without actually going into the repo. Just github.com slash your username. So my username is only phantom. So github.com slash only phantom. And while there's yet nothing here, it's because we haven't refreshed the page. So all you need to do is to refresh the page. And now, sure enough, the magic happens. So you can see all of that being rendered at the top. Uh, before the pain repositories, you see now a new row um, with my work and affiliations, my buttons, all of that coming out very nicely. If I inspect the element, I want to talk about a little detail here. So GitHub strips all the style tags and attributes preventing you from changing the style on your pages. So you cannot add a style tag. So you have the ankle bracket style. Um, you see that in HTML and CSS, you use that pretty fairly commonly. I think any any uh, web designer, web developer, uh, you use the, the, the style tag fairly uh, frequently. But uh, the GitHub actually stripped that away. So if you try to style it with, uh, if you add some styling colors and stuff like that, put them in the style tag, this is not gonna work. So this is probably for security reasons. Um, it, it's afraid that you could inject CSS into GitHub pages, you could easily launch some sort of uh, uh, attack, right? So that was taken away. So if I wanna make my list looks good, I can't use a UL, um, which is like a, UL stands for unordered list, or an OL stands for ordered list. So UL and OL is also fairly common in HTML and CSS. You use UL and OL to create unordered list or ordered list. By default, it looks pretty ugly because it has that bullet point next to it, right? So typically, I don't want that, uh, especially on something like a GitHub profile readme, I don't want that. So I wanna take that away. The normal way I would go about that is to just add a style tag and then I'll put something like uh, decoration equals to none. So list decoration, I set it to none and that would take that away. But because I can't use the style, style tag, so what I end up doing is kind of a nice, neat workaround. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the best way to do that. Maybe anyone who's, you know, have, who have to come across this, maybe find a more elegant way to approach that. Maybe you can leave that in the comments and let me know how you do that. But what I did was I used a DL instead. DL stands for definition list. So DL definition list, and then I closed that in definition list. And using DT stands for definition title and definition, so DD. So while I, if I use DL, DT, DD, um, just mixing them together, it, it produced, um, you know, so, something kind of uh, what, I, what I want here without the bullet list and stuff like that. So that's my workaround. Maybe if you, if you have a better way, um, let me know how you do it. Finally, I put everything into a div align left for the image. And then I have a div align right for the, the two sections that I was just talking about. So that's the connect with me section. So that's all the links to where you find me on the internet. And then um, there is the work and affiliation. So that's where the second section goes to. So there is a, so it's kind of like a nice neat two columns format. And on the left, you know, there is a, a width of 60% of the image. The, the image is stored in this folder called assets. And so that's kind of a nice banner. I feel like that's going to drive some traffic. People are going to look at that, look at the uh, header image, the banner image, and then think that, okay, maybe I'm, I should check them out 
on YouTube and uh, hopefully that could bring me uh, a little bit more viewership because I feel like right now I'm a little bit struggling with the amount of views and um, you know people who are coming up to check out my, con my content. So that's that. And then uh, on the right section, that's kind of all my links. So it's just a very simple two page. I feel like if you have, I'm sure that you're more creative than me, um, maybe go ahead, you know, create something nice. And if you have something beautiful to look at, why don't you leave a, a link to your GitHub and I can check that out and other people can check that out. Leave it in the comment section and we can all, you know, uh, get some inspiration from yours. So that's about it actually. It's not a long video. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that if you don't have one, I feel like you should go get one, you know, maybe promote your blog, your articles, your medium links, you know, just, just try to bring some traffic to wherever you're creating content. And as a developer, I feel like that's something that we don't do enough of. So that's kind of uh, that's kind of it for today. I'm running out of time. So I'll catch you in the next video. Remember to subscribe, share this video if you find it useful. Thank you.